So we have Donna in the building. How's it going, ma'am? Oh, it's a little on the rough side right now. A little bit on the rough side. Yes, I have. Um, we came together in this she trucking group. Shout out to the she right. trucking group. And we just going to go ahead and jump right into it. So you you what's what actually is going on? Because I, I remember the post that you made, but I can't yeah. remember the post you made. OK, just if you want me to, I can give you a little background. What brought me up to even make the post? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. for um, sure. I, OK. OK. I worked for a company for a little over two years and they were really good. They were really good. I drove as a owner op, well, lease purchase, I want to say, because there's a big difference. I'm finding that out now. And uh, like last year, my 1099 was a couple of hundred uh, being $300,000. So everything was really good. And I know that the economy is all messed up. The fuel's up, the freight's a little soft, but my truck started going downhill. And when I say it was going downhill, it was going downhill fast. I think 7,000 in December, 14,000 in February. Uh, let me see, another 10,000 in March. And just finally, it just kicked the bucket. I had to be towed. I was in Memphis, Indiana. I had to be towed. I stayed outside of a fence for three days waiting on them to make a decision on what to do, the company. And they gave me, they said, we'll put you in a company truck. And this is the current company you're with now. Not with them no more. The, current, the, for, not. the former company that yeah, you the was former, with. Yes, okay. the former company. Yes. Okay. Yeah. They said that they would pay me 80 cent a mile to drive their company truck. And I'm like, well, you know what? I got to pay bills. So I've got to do something and I'm not home. That's for sure. So, so so I got in their company truck. So hold on, before you got into the company truck, you you was running lease with them, right? Yes. But the truck that you was in leasing unfortunately kept breaking down if I'm if I'm to understand. That's it. Well, breaking down, it was having like major breakdown. What year and model, what year and model of the was the truck? 2016 Freightliner Cascadia. Uh, how long? Yeah. Have you, how long have you been with the company when they gave you the truck? Um, when I got the truck, I had just got with the company. I got to Chicago and went straight into the truck as a lease purchase. First load out, I had to put an uh, alternator in the truck. Oh my God! So, in other words, they gave you somebody else's okay. problem, pretty much. And yeah. how much you was paying for the truck a week? I was paying $500 a week for the truck, but I also had a separate lease on a trailer that I was purchasing at $250 a week. Okay, so we're looking at about $750 a week for truck and trailer. But the right. 20 it but was the, all your insurance. Was, was, that, was the $500 a week on the 2016 was for the 2016? It would have caught it would have been more if they would have put you in, in a much better truck. More, yes. At that time he told me that was the only truck he had to lease out. Oh my God. And I was I can consider myself fortunate because they were selling me the trailer because they were renting like renting out trailers for three fifty a week to people who were coming on there with their own truck. Okay, so lucky for you, but, it was two fifty a week for the truck and trailer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But now the thing is, like I said, it was two separate leases. When the truck went down and they gave me the uh, company truck, I made the statement to them that I'd like to continue to make the payments on the trailer. I've already got two years in it, and they told me, "Oh, that trailer's not for sale." What? Well, so the so all of a sudden. You was paying two hundred and fifty dollars a week for the lease on the trailer, up under the pretense of it's going to be sold to you at the end of the lease. Right. And yes. Now that the truck broke down and pretty much the truck is no more because they pretty much knew about it. 
<laughs> now that they put you in a oh okay weird sorry about that but we'll put you in a company yeah. truck downgrade you from making maybe about a dollar 25 cent a mile down to 80 cent a mile I was making 88% of the line haul. 88% of the line haul. Wow. Yeah. My, my, Down to yeah, 80 mine, cent like a mile. Yeah, and I was making some time. You got to take out your fuel and all that. But I was getting some loads that was 250 to $3 if you want to set, do it like that a mile. Like I said, last year, my 1099 was a couple of hundred of being $300,000. Wow. And uh, the thing is, even though I got in their company truck, they put the truck in the shop and had some major work done on it to the tune of $18,000. They charged that to me. Wait, what? Wait, so, yes. So and they, they so, started making. So, so they gave you a lemon, pretty much, put it in the shop. Right. Did they do the yes. work? They, so obvious, obviously they did the work. So instead yes. of taking on after, after it was their truck, after I gave it back to them, yes. Okay. After so, they agreed to take it back. So yes. they took the truck back. They, yeah. And put you in a company truck to make 80 cent a mile, but they still charging you for the repairs that they did to the truck? Yes. So they started deducting my out of my check each week. So I wasn't even, I'm not going to lie to you, I wasn't even hardly making enough to feed myself out there on the road and try to take care of the children that I have at home. My daughter was murdered in 2020, oh and she God. left behind six children. I'm sorry. One I'm got sorry three. It's, it's, a, it's something I have to live with every day. But one grandmother took three kids. I took the other three. So, and uh, what, it's, it's, this is so it's, much, it's really, it's rough. This is so much to unpack, Donna. Uh, again, my, yeah. my, my condolences to you for the loss of your daughter. Thank I'm you. sure I can't, Thanks. I can't, be, I can't begin to, I, I can't begin to feel the way you feel of the loss of a child. That's, and that's what I tell a lot of people that you knew her, you went to the funeral, and you went on with your life. But I didn't just lose her that one time when somebody took her life. I lose her every time I open my eyes and wake up in the morning. I lose her again. And I know these kids are the same way. The youngest one I have in the house, she's 12. So she was 10 when it happened. I was not, I was on the road when I got the call. And I was with Jane Harshugel. I'll throw out the name. Oh my God. And you was with Jane Harshugel? That was, that's my old stepping grounds right there. Oh, really? Yes. My, the reason I got Jane Harshugel is because my cousin was a recruiter for them. And she had been for years. And I made a couple of decent checks with him, a thousand dollars or more. What was your cousin's name? Her name is Don. What's Don's last name? Oh my God, and she's not her married last. Her married. What? Oh God, she's got Don. She's out of Tampa. Oh my gosh, what is Don's last name? I can't even think of Don's last name right now. Okay, but she's out of Tampa. She's been there for years. Okay, and well, I think before that she was R. E. Garrison. I I think Don. I, I, you say her name is Don. Don. Yes. D a w n. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now might be familiar with her. I'm not sure, but yes. the recruiter that I worked with that I worked with together was her name was Katie. Yeah. I was. think I actually spoke with a Katie too when I was on my way to Minnesota for my orientation. Yeah, I was the driver. I was the driver recruiter for J and R Shugel for the duration that I was there. So oh, yeah, okay. that's okay. Yeah, that's crazy. But uh, back to that, that is so, so you now I know we uh, sorry that we jumped off the subject a little bit. That's, listen, that's fine. It happens. Um but what happened to your daughter? If if it's too painful to talk about, we can... It, 
listen, it, listen, I'm one of those, it helps me to talk about her. It, it keeps her alive to me. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So take your time. You know, what happened? Okay. She was, we were all living in one house. She had her kids and she took care of them. She couldn't work. She had a couple of years prior to that. She almost died behind heart problems. And she had three artificial heart valves. And that's during the 36. Wow. Okay. Okay. 36 years old. Yeah. And so when I did the switch, I did the switch from, let me see, how did I do that? J&R Shugel. Okay. I went from Climbing Express to J&R Shugel while I was on the road. While I was on the road. And she said, Mom, she says, I'm going to find something I can do to help you out until you get back straight again. I'm like, okay. I'm thinking cashier or something like that. But she took on a job as a nanny for a Puerto Rican couple, not knowing that they were big time drug dealers. And she actually had called me like two days before she was murdered and was telling me something that happened and that she was very scared. And I told her just to go home and forget about working, just go home. And I want to assume from the conversation that we had that somebody must have walked in on her and called her talking to me because they asked her who she was talking to. And she says, I'm talking to my mom. Right. And I remember through the conversation before she had told somebody that I asked her, I said, who was driving? And she got real quiet, like somebody was in the room and she, she wouldn't say any names or anything. She just, wouldn't even say driving. She just said somebody. Right. And two days later, she they she was had been murdered. So she she seen a drug deal go bad. She I don't even know if she realized that's what was going on because she was in the back seat, sitting between two car seats with kids in it. Because it had, she was the nanny for the kids. Yeah, yeah. So she got murdered in the car with the kids. No, they took her to a hotel okay. and it's a, it's a hotel that, and right now the detectives still don't know if that's the actual place that she was murdered. They just know that's where she was found. This hotel has no cameras. They don't take ID for you to check in, All right. but there was a picture that was posted on Facebook that showed the side of her leg and the pajama she had on the bed. In, in the room was a disaster, and the lady was taking a picture of her daughter standing up against the bed. Two hours later, when the police busted that motel room door down because of my other granddaughter had started getting text messages, you know how this younger group is. They hear about everything. And, uh, yeah, she went up to the motel and was banging on the door, and she thought her mom was sick the reason she wasn't getting up answering the door and call the police and everything. And when they busted in, she was dead, but the room was spotless. Nobody had ever even been in it. Like, like when you first rent a room, they killed her somewhere else and moved her to the hotel. Yes. Yeah. Did, did, Did they ever find out what was the cause of death? They said that somebody had injected her with, uh, fentanyl straight fentanyl they said they injected her with enough fentanyl to kill an elephant plus she had a bad heart so that that yeah definitely didn't work well yeah you as a mother on the road you were jnr swoogle at the time right yes you on the road just driving listening to your music not just chilling you get the terrible phone call what was, was your reaction thinking, and thought? What was your reaction and and your feelings when well, you got that was, call? I was asleep. I was asleep because I was six miles from my delivery out of Chicago. 
<laughs> and I was at the, one of the service plazas there. Uh, what is that? I can't even remember that road right now, but it's a, got the service plazas on it. It's a toll road. I was like six miles away from it. And uh, it just felt like somebody was ripping my chest out. I, of course, I beat it my fist up against the side of the bunk there. And my husband was with me. And uh, anyway, he tried to hold me and stuff like that. And it's just, I think shock took over and I called J&R Shugel. Uh, and, uh, yeah, what was their position as far as getting you back home to, to take care? What they told me, they could take me off the load and they could get me a rental. Okay. But cool. my mind had already went to setting in that I knew she didn't have any insurance. Right. And that these kids were going to need all the help that they could get to put their mom away. Right. So I went ahead and I delivered the load. And I picked up another load and brought it to, well, they're outside of the Atlanta area where they have the drop yard. Yeah. Jay, yeah, I brought it there. And then I bobtailed the rest of the way home. And I guess <laughs> this is what brings me to reason I'm not with Jane Arshul is because even Dawn tried to fight for me. I was out two weeks. Right. And I was a lease purchase there. And right. they wouldn't work with me with getting caught up. I went back to I went back out for them, but I ran three weeks with no check. And and I can count and I know how long it should have taken me to get caught back up. Right. So I just finally told them heck with it and took their truck back. And uh, I went from there to this company that I'm with, the one I just walked off of right now. Oh, man. So your family tragedy that pretty much set you back on the lease. Now, I believe, I'm not sure, but at the time when I was there, Jay and Arshugel didn't have a, like a lease purchase. They have more of a like a lease rental type deal. You know? This was, yeah, this was, and this is the thing. They told me it was a lease purchase. And I think it was for four changed, years. Yeah, and they, then you could, yeah, they just changed all of that after yeah, I left. Yeah. And like I said, that, that ended when they showed me how heartless that they were. Yeah. They could have. They they could have no. at least gave you a, they could have cut you a break. They could have if they would have cut those yeah if they would have cut those two weeks down and to say where they just took two hundred dollars a week out my check mm -hmm. I could have made it. Wow. But they were killing me. They were killing me and and it was making it hard for time, you. To, just, it was making it hard for yes. you to run all these miles and yes. still be in the red. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And there's been a lot of life changes since then. I've had to get a larger home because of having, it's already hard enough as a truck driver to get custody of kids. So I did have to acquire a larger home. The home we had, I was letting my daughter and her kids stay there until she could get on her feet. It wasn't made for that many people. Right. Man. It's, listen, it's, it's been rough. I, my bills are a lot higher than what they normally would have been for just me and my husband. And it's been, a, it's been a, a few tragedies since then. My sister-in-law daughter died a year later, right after Christmas due to sickle cell complications and uh, left her with three kids to raise. And then my brother-in-law just recently passed, and he was taking care of my mother-in-law. So that's why my husband's not in the home with me right now. He's in Virginia taking care of his mom until we could figure out what to do with her on a permanent basis. So it's me, just me beating the, my head up against the wall trying to take care of these kids I've got and not lose anything. And <clears throat> like I said, I've got a lot of approvals out of the Chicago area and most of them will rent a car for me because when I leave, I don't want to just leave with one bag and can't take my truck stuff to get comfortable in a truck to be able to run. Donna, you experienced so much turmoil in your life. I, my prayers is definitely Thank out you. to you. Now for this former company that was treating you 
or treating you bad, that's on top of what's going yeah, on they, with you. They that's yeah, just so yeah. horrible right now. Like and I'm having to go through the what do you call it, a labor board there out of Chicago and the because they haven't paid me my last three checks. They didn't pay me the check when I came home. And the reason I came home a week early, but I had already been out for two months. Mm-hmm. I came home because my 17 year old had to have an infusion done and she has a slight learning disability. So she didn't think to ask any questions about why, or what causes this, anything. And the very next day after she had the infusion done, she had to be rushed to the hospital. I was in Alabama. So I told the company, they were sending me to Savannah, picking up a load in Alabama, taking it to Savannah. Yeah. I told them, I said, well, after I deliver in Savannah, shoot me down to Florida. Okay. They got mad with me. This was, they the got former, mad with me. this was the former company, right? Yes. Yeah, they got mad with me, took me off the load and told me to deadhead. Now, they told me on the phone to deadhead home, which was over 500 miles. With no At pay? that point in time, I got, listen, no pay. I got nervous. Okay. I got nervous, so I had them to put it in text because I was scared they were going to say that I had stole a truck because let me back up. A few weeks prior to that, I didn't get a paycheck either. They told me that their ACH in their bank was down. What? Now, I'm not no dummy. Listen, it don't happen just one bank. If the ACH was down, nobody got paid that Friday in America. Right. Or nobody got paid yeah. within that company if the ACH right. yeah. was down. Yeah. So what are you saying right. is and, that uh, some, so what are you saying that other people were paid and they was just trying to get sent I know that one you got, wolf tickets? Uh, I think they were giving me wolf tickets, yes, because a girlfriend of mine who used to drive for him has a, I think she said uh, he's an ex-brother-in-law or something that drives for them. Mm-hmm. And she called him and he told her he had gotten paid. Okay. So, it, but it's weird because the same day that I didn't get paid out there when they said their ACH was down, my dispatcher and her husband, and my dispatcher was over all the other dispatchers, they quit. Oh. Okay. Yeah, and I didn't even know about it until I got an email from her. Now, none of my dispatchers are in the United States. They're all in right. Serbia. Especially when you're dealing yeah. with Chicago land companies. 90, Listen, about, oh 85, about 85% of your yeah. dispatchers are not in America. And, and I have no complaints because I'm going to tell you, they know what they're doing. Right. They know what they're doing and they're good at it, but... Thank, I knew then I started getting that gut feeling. So I did start looking at other companies because I knew then you know, when I start getting that feeling, something ain't right here. Yeah, it's time ACH to, yeah. down. Yeah, okay. So then when I told them I had to come home because of my child being mm-hmm. sick and I needed to find out what's going on with her having to have infusions mm-hmm. because sickle cell runs in... My first husband has passed away. His younger brother died of sickle cell. Right. And her grandfather, my, my daughter's father, had a trace of sickle cell. So all this is shooting through my head. My niece passed away from sickle cell last year. So all this stuff is running through my head. I need to get home and find out what's going on with this child. Yeah. I was basically told that I wasn't getting my paycheck until I come back out to work for them. What? Yeah, so they and I have you, not received. So they owe you a paycheck. Three paychecks. So they they owe, owe me three paychecks. So they owe you three settlements. Yeah, but refuse to give it to you because you haven't came back out with them. And they actually, I made them put it in text. I told them I wasn't. If they wanted to be like that, I wasn't coming back out. But I'd right. bring the truck back to them. And they told me they wanted me to bring the truck back, load it. And I told them, you ain't paid for what I've already called. I'm not bringing nothing back to you. Load it. Exactly. So, you haven't even you yeah. haven't even paid me for the loans that I already ran. And I'm going to tell you, I got to where I wouldn't even talk to them on the phone. Everything was done through text. I needed to protect me. Right. No you needed, something, no you, you needed something in writing. You needed something yes. in writing. 
and text and email yes. is just about as close to a legal document that you can get. Yes, yes. And where I normally park is 35 miles actually away from my home, but I know that everything is safe there. Mm -hmm. But what I did, I took one more step. I dropped the trailer there, but I brought the tractor up to my house and I backed it in my front yard because I have cameras. Right. That way there, they cannot go pick up a truck. To me, this is what I'm thinking. And tell me something's wrong with it. And when... So with... Okay, so you got home, made sure that your daughter was all right. Thank God. Yeah. They want you to go... Now, where are you? You're in Florida? That's where you're from? Yeah, I'm in Ocala. Uh, yes, I'm in Ocala, yes. Oh, okay, so you're in Florida... So basically what they're telling yeah. you, what they're telling you now is they wanted you to pick up a load in Florida or in Savannah because usually Florida loads yeah, come like Savannah. a dime a dozen dime a dozen. And yeah, the next yeah. closest loads that you can pick up is in Savannah, Georgia. Yeah. But they want you to go pick up a load and then bring it up to Chicago, Illinois. Pretty right. much. Yeah, and then they said they would Listen, yeah, they said they would fly me home. And they so like, I didn't feel comfortable with that. Right. I didn't feel comfortable with that because back when I was broke down for three days, sitting beside a fence at Freightliner, because mm -hmm. you can't sleep in there, they Ubered me to the airport two times in a row to rent a car. Okay. And the first time I went, that the airport said they don't do same-day rentals. Uh, so they made a rental weird. for the next day and Ubered me there. They Ubered me there. Okay. They don't have a corporate car. They can't rent a car. So you pretty much so you pretty much stuck with all this coming out of pocket then, pretty much. Yes, yes. So they actually ended up bringing the company truck to me. But then they charged me $300 for a cleaning fee on the truck. <sighs> How was I supposed to clean anything? I'm stuck beside of a road with no water. Oh my God! Yeah, I'm having it, to buy drinking water. I'm having to. I'm having to get an Instacart it to me. Wow. So that yeah, yeah. That, with all that going on, yeah, that that was that's a telltale sign of yeah. Let me go ahead and pack it up and call it a day with this yeah. company. Now that yeah. you, now that you, I'm sure you didn't. I'm sure you got the truck up back up to them. I well, hope yes, you did. They I, were green. I, I yes, hope you didn't. Green. I've got it. Oh, okay. I didn't dump it. I didn't do anything to it. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Oof. The old me back in my younger days. <laughs> yeah, you would have left it there and said, fuck they, it. <laughs> yeah, but no, I did park <laughs> it in my yard. Um, he, agreed, he agreed since I wouldn't take a loaded truck. <laughs> he agreed and I got it in text messages mm -hmm. where they would come and get it. That they wasn't in no rush. And that's exactly how he put it. No rush. And the reason he did that was he thought that by me setting and he knew my financial situation and I have kids, he figured I would jump back in the truck and work for them some more. But that's, that's and it, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm paying the price for not working. Trust me. But when the guy, they sent a new driver here to get it out of Florida, I took and made him text out after that. He, I gave him the fuel card. Yep. I made him text out that the truck was clean. Yep. I made him inspect the truck, yep. and I made him text out, truck is in good shape. There you go. Emailed you, that to myself. There you go. You did everything right. My my question is this: now that you're no longer yes. that, now that you're no longer with the company, but they still charging yes. you. How are they still charging you? For the truck, if you're not if you're not number one before you left the company, they were still charging you for the truck. How is that possible as being a company driver that you only drove on them for only a short period of time? But how are they still give, leaving you the responsibilities of, of of paying for the truck yeah. that you're not even driving? Yeah, because I got right here. I just picked it up in my hand. I got it beside me on the couch because I've been like going through so many people talking. Because it's a walk-away lease. It's a walk-away lease. And I gave them the truck back in April, gave it back to them. And they had me to put it in a shop in Ocala. Okay, now at that point in time, it was already theirs again. I gave it to them in April. Now, I drove until June as a company driver. 
Mm-hmm. So whatever you – and the story about how I got to Memphis, Indiana, is they asked me to pick up the truck from Ocala, and now I done gave it back to them, mm-hmm. and bring it to Chicago. Okay. Bring it to Chicago. The truck, I kept telling them, that truck hadn't been fixed from Freightliner in Ocala. I kept having – the truck kept cutting off on me on the other side of Atlanta trying to get to Chicago. It mm-hmm. made it to Memphis, Indiana, and that was it. It had to be towed. Now, when I picked up that truck, it was yours. Nothing else am I responsible for. Exactly. Yeah. But, like I said, they charged me $300 for cleaning it. How was I, I, I swept it. You know, I swept it. I wiped off the, the dash and everything. But I couldn't do no heavy-duty cleaning on the floors or nothing. I had no water. The water I had to buy. And the water I bought was not for cleaning. It was for drinking. Wow, Don. So, there, it, I know. It, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy because it's, I'm sitting here right now. I can send you the text messages where I applied with Landstar mm-hmm. three weeks ago. I used to work for Landstar years ago. I ran for a fleet owner with Landstar, and I still am in some of their groups on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And I, as soon as I got in the house on the day I got home from this company, I'm sitting here. I'm like going through Facebook, trying not to let the kids know I'm stressing. And this ad, this well, this guy put on a, out an ad there needing a driver. Landstar, Matt. I have the X endorsement. He's willing to pay a five thousand dollar cash sign on bonus. He lives about a little over an hour from me. And we talked real good. After the fuel and everything is taken out, we're gonna he's gonna give me forty five percent of the line haul. And he's paying for the fuel. And I'm thinking, well, that's not a bad deal. It's not a bad deal. And he has his own trailer, so I'm not gonna have to be hunting trailers and stuff. But you'll be and uh but you'll be a ten ninety nine driver up under up under him. Did that ever that, yes. did that ever materialize or no? Yeah, he actually gives you the option of 1099 or W2. Mm-hmm. And because I'm already a 1099 for this year here, I said what I was going to do was finish out this year as a 1099. And in the beginning of next year, I was going to go to W2. But I don't even know if this job is going to pan out. I have no problem. I know I'm going to be certified with Landstar approved and everything because they're already in the stages of this week of checking on my past employers. So that means if I'm in that stage, they've already good. All right. So right now you're just waiting on the answers from Landstar right now. That's what I had intended to do, but I'm getting a little scared that before I get an answer from Landstar, that my electric's going to be off and that my phone's going to be off. All right. So you, you're you know, running into. I've got to go fund me. Yeah. I had one of the ladies last night. That I guess she was trying to say that I was trying to scam or something because I do have a GoFundMe out there, but I wouldn't put it on she trucking because I know it's not allowed. You, Question you, I ask. You, you know what? The, the only issue that i have with the ladies of she trucking i yeah they can't be yeah. I, and i talked to you know, i had i know sheree more personally and yeah. when i talked to a lot of ladies in the group a lot of ladies came on to the podcast and i had some good conversations yeah. with them and everything but as far as you guys coming in there y'all express your issues and your problems and you would think that the ladies of she trucking would be sympathetic to your issues, but they're really not because it's been so many, it's been so many scams that came through there. We had ladies that came in and said that they were stranded, but they really wasn't. Think, yeah. They, yeah. We had ladies that yeah. came in and they asked for, they asked for wash, they asked for shower cars and then come to find shower. out yeah. that they took advantage of the, of the person that gave them the card number. They used all the card points used and all point. like that. It's a few and, of them. And I understand that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I understand that because mm-hmm. I see it a lot too, but I didn't ask for any money. Right. Only thing I asked if there was any driver. Mm-hmm. Going to be in this area mm-hmm. that can maybe give me a ride. 
to Chicago. Exactly. Because there's, like I said, there's a few companies up there. I don't think I'm going to be able to afford to wait this Landstar out. Mm -hmm. I can't right now. The state would be all over me if this electric goes off with these kids. Right. Exactly. And if my phone goes off, then I'm, if my phone goes off, then I'm the F word because and I, I can't communicate, get a job. And I knew, I, I knew that when you asked that question, because you said, you, you said that you have a job lined up. But all of us yeah. that was in that all of us that was in your thread was simply asking why the company couldn't get you up. They will. They'll rent a car for me, mm -hmm. but I have to come up with the gas money, which they'll reimburse. And like I said, I don't feel comfortable on planes and a bus ride. You can only take so much stuff. Yeah. But okay. I just I would have felt more comfortable taking a car. And at this point right now, I'm about ready to say the heck with it and just take a bus and I'll be so tired and wore out when I get there. But sometimes, I took a bus for my first load, so, sometimes my first Don, job, and it like they killed me. Sometimes yeah. Donna's sacrifices have to be made. Yeah. And that's I, why I'm, I not, I'm not a fan. I, I am definitely not a fan of the of the Greyhound. But in, right, in yeah. situations that you're in, you're not able to afford the fuel. Right. Right. You're not able yeah. to afford the fuel to yeah. get you up to Chicago. They'll give you they'll give you the car to get up to Chicago, but you won't be right. able to afford the fuel to get up there because a little bit of right. money that you have left, you need that to cover for your expenses at the house. And if you want to hear something really funny, one of the girls threw up my GoFundMe. It showed $155 on there. And then she asked if I spent it on KFC, Burger King, Waffle House, or whatever. Wow. You know, yeah, they, now, like, I said, they, I I like I said, they can be ruthless. They really can. Sometimes, yes, sometimes yes. they really can't. I guess because of the maturity. because the yeah, the maturity of the group and I guess because of everything that happened within the group in all these years, it just uh, they hearts just got a little bit more yeah. hardened than what it was before. Yeah. And it's and kind of... Listen, mm -hmm. I'm going to be 60 years old next month. Mm -hmm. And I've been driving for many years, was brought up in a truck driving family. And I'm so glad my heart didn't get like that. I still give money out at the truck stops to people. I Something to tell me, something to move me and tell me that's okay to give this guy some money. So and I, Some of them I won't because I know definitely what they're doing with it. Right. Yeah, I'm so glad that my heart hasn't gotten that hard yet. Some of these groups, like I said, I'm in a lot of them. And I just... Yeah. Yeah, I just take it for I just take it for what it is. I never right. knock on wood. I never actually came through to a group to ask them for any help because I know how they can how they could really be. I removed that. I removed that post last night. I took it down. I took it down, and I don't think I'll make any more posts on there. I'm, I'm I'm sorry that I'm I'm sorry that that happened to you, and now that you see some of the yeah. 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 Man, Donna, wow. Thank you for sharing your story. Very powerful. I, you're in my prayers. I'm hoping your I'm hoping your situation gets better. You know what I'm saying? I'm hoping your situation get gets way better. It needs to. You need you need something yeah. to to change. You need to see that light at the end of the tunnel. I'm right. hoping and praying that everything works out for you. If so, maybe we can come back. We can probably come back again. Okay. And you can let me know if, every, if there's a turnaround for you. You know what I'm saying? Maybe right. the company yeah. that you're going with will be that will be that company that will be the company that'll help you out financially and you'll be able to get back on your feet. So definitely come back yeah, to come back and we'll talk about it. It's a nerve wracking thing. Yeah, it's nerve wracking because Chicago land <laughs> and I'm Chicago land where the good money's at, but you don't know what's going to happen to you when you get out there. Okay. How long have you been driving? Over 10 years. You know, I, I know a few companies. They're not in Chicagoland, but oh, okay. I know a company out of Missouri that I can send your information to. Okay. I, know, I, I, I know of a company out of Ohio, if you're willing to go to Ohio. But, but listen, uh, it's not that much farther than Chicago, is it? Maybe about. <laughs> listen, so I'll tell you I'm what. I'll, tell I'll you get why. you. I just. 
Oh, go okay, ahead. I'll get your. I'll get, uh, send me the rest of your yeah. information via text, and uh, and I'll send it to a couple of people. Hopefully, they'll be okay. able to reach out to you, and you'll be able to chop it up with them, and uh, and see if that works out for you as well. While you still making the okay. pilgrimage down to Chicago land. Yeah, because I'm also. Yeah, I also put in an application last night for I know well is a very good company. A friend of mine that he, he's passed away now, but he worked for thirty something years. He actually died in Atlanta. He pulled his truck off side of the road and threw the air brakes and died. He worked for him for thirty something years, so I know they're a pretty good company. It's in Wisconsin, but they do have a terminal in Florida, but I don't know if they hire out of that terminal. I'll send you my info. Listen, any help I can get would be appreciated. Not a problem. I will try to I will try to do that. Donna, thank you very much for coming on to the yes. show, sharing You're your welcome. sharing your experience and your stories and everything. I really do appreciate it. Okay. All right, guys, the best conversation starts over here at the Lockout Man Podcast Show. Thank you, guys. If y'all want to jump on to one six six zero zero two zero nine zero, this like my good friend right here, Miss Donna. She is a fan or a friend of the show now. Donna, again, thank you very much. Let's get back together again yeah, well, and see okay. see what happened to you in the, in the future. Okay, I'll let you know. I'll keep you in touch. <laughs>